Today, we're here to do a full movie breakdown, criticism, and analysis of Troy, Sheila, and Mike's story from the 2010 film, Why Did I Get Married 2? Written and directed by Tyler Perry, Why Did I Get Married 2? continues the stories of four couples as they meet up in the Bahamas for their annual marriage retreat, determined to fight for their marriages against the most difficult of challenges. Please note that in this video series on Why Did I Get Married 2? We've decided to create a separate video for each of the couples so that we can fully examine what happens in detail without the time constraints. Be sure to check out our breakdowns of the other couples as well as our full series on the first film, Why Did I Get Married, linked in the description. In this video, we'll focus on Troy and Sheila's relationship and Mike trying to interrupt their happiness. I'm Height. And I'm Cherie. And you've discovered actually <laughs> I can't wait to talk about this movie. But first, we want to thank all of the supporters who've helped to make this video possible. If you want your name to appear alongside these contributors, make a one-time donation via Cash App or click the thanks button on this video, or you can head on over to patreon.com slash axiomamnesia or become a channel member by clicking the join button to enjoy all of the benefits of becoming a monthly subscriber. Don't you understand? Oh, I love it, I love it. Hi. How y'all doing? <laughs> so the first time that we see Sheila and Troy, they are welcomed into a beautiful villa in the Bahamas. I mean, the place looks gorgeous. Uh, nothing but white sandy beaches, blue water, and friendly people and i mean the the villa is so luxurious looking like it, who wouldn't want to live in a place like this and as a nod to the first movie one of the first lines is this is better than a brochure yeah this is better than a brochure Check it out. <laughs> that's what diane said about troy's place in colorado wow the brochure didn't do this place justice how you guys doing welcome to lake leland as they're going out, just kind of exploring the place, Sheila and Troy go out back. Oh, come on, let's go outside. Oh, this is paradise. Yo. And Sheila's like, you know, if you ever questioned if there is a God, you know, look at this. It is just so stunning and beautiful. Um, not just the house itself, but just the nature, yeah. the palm trees, the water, the beaches. And if you have enough money, then God allows you to go. But if not, then you would never see this. But because <laughs> Troy talks about this is where all our money went. Like how much money went into this trip? That's presumably to me part of Patricia's study. Look, we're we trying to talk about them. We're not even going to talk about them. <laughs> but the, I'm talking about the money. Like how much, uh, you know. I know. I know Patricia's study should be covering the cost of this. We talked about that in the um, comment section a lot on this last video that we had done on the previous film, which was on Patricia and Gavin's relationship. So this is where all our money went, huh? Don't look at it that way, please. <laughs> yeah, so they're talking about how all, well, Troy brings up that all our money went here. What's going on? Are they broke, broke? Because and she's he, like, don't look at it that way. <laughs> yeah, this is what we need. And then Troy says, I need a job. This is what we need. We need a job. Hmm. So, like, they spent their money to come out here to paradise and stuff, and it seems like they're having hard times. In the last film, you know, everything was all good. They were happy. and I'm married now. <gasps> Get out! The ring looks, it's it's huge. Troy has some money, clearly. Some money. And she, she's got, you know, at least a two to three carat uh, solitaire in the middle of all that. Now, granted, we know it's fake for the movie. But the point is, the thing is huge. And I think that was on purpose, right? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> now it's just like, oh, we broke. Our story ain't going to be the same as it was in the first one. Well, you know, when you got money woes, that always puts some extra stress on the situation. But the funny thing is how Troy is like bringing the reality. You know, before he was bringing the dream, right? In the first movie, Troy was like, you know, you can be what you want, Sheila. You can stay here. You can have a new, you know, a new start in Colorado, Sheila. You know, Sheila. It's a great time for a new start if you want to stay. You know, I'm the knight in shining armor. We see a very <laughs> different Troy out the gate. He <laughs> is like a realist. He's like, I need to be able to provide. But we also get yeah. some other information about them, too. Right. He's out of work. But we find out they moved to Atlanta and they have a new baby. Relax. To move to Atlanta, the new baby. I mean, still not having work. I mean, that's a big change. Troy had it popping back in Colorado. 
Mm-hmm. He was the sheriff of the town, which means basically he ran a town. He had he the had general the store, store. And he had that lodge or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, his, his parents' house or That home he was that renting out. Mm-hmm. And now he's broke. <laughs> I don't know. It's the way you say now he's broke. But, I mean, these things do cost money. So he's clearly and rightfully yeah. stressed because Troy... I'm not willing to give up. I'm not going to accept if Tyler Perry has made some changes in this character that I don't like. Yeah. I'm going to still see him as the same Troy I knew from the first movie. He's taken his responsibility of his family seriously. And this is why he's stressed. Because he's on vacation and he's like, I ain't got no job. And we spent the last yeah. of what we got. But I can't say he's necessarily broke, right? Because when you have money and you have a budget, you say that you don't have money or all our money went here when you're talking about all the money in the budget. So at this point in the film, it could just be that, okay, our little wiggle room is gone or whatever, but I don't take that necessarily as all the way broke, but yeah, I he's agree. still looking for a job. He's a responsible man. So he ain't spending down to his last. Ain't no way a man like Troy would have even agreed to go on this trip. If it was actually their quote last, we're talking about, it was maybe their last of their discretionary money. It was the last of, you know, some little money they had set aside. Trust and believe they are not, this is not the mortgage or the rent money uh, that he is spending to be on this trip. Troy is not that kind of man. I don't know. You don't know. That's who he was in the first film. Very responsible. Why would he be different now? I don't know. They didn't talk about uh, being fiscally responsible. So I don't know Mm. how he handles money. I don't know. Y'all, y'all go to the comments. Let us know. Would Troy go on this trip spending his last money if it was truly his last like if he wasn't going to have that much more money left at all do you think he would have gone on this trip Hi. how are you <laughs> good, to oh, good. good to see you trisha and gavin arrive and they and sheila greets them on her way back in from talking with troy gavin asks about you know where's troy and sheila lies and says he's out there on a jet ski oh he's out there on a jet ski wow that sounds like a lot of fun uh- because he's not. You just walked in. Y'all was just standing there talking. But all right. Well, he went to the jet ski, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say she lied. We already starting this basically no, like she lied. That's a that's another nod, I think, to the first film, though, too. Because the first one, they were talking about snowmobiles. And now we got the water version of that, you know, yeah. the jet ski. So, you know, Tyler Perry threw in a little couple nuggets up in there. Yeah. So, you know, we see Gavin and then he kisses Patricia and whatever. And, you know, he's like, I basically he wants to go join him or whatever. And so then the ladies are left there. They hug and they kiss and whatever. But one thing that you'll notice is that when Gavin and Patricia kiss, uh, he seems, you know, fine. And she kind of has this look on her face. This is going to be amazing for us. But we'll get into that in detail in their story. So So subscribe so that you don't miss out on what we got coming up. And if y'all want to be really in-depth involved in these conversations, y'all need to check out our Discord server. And a link will be in the description. Yes, because we can talk about this all the time. And we are talking about having like some watch parties and stuff there. You know, here on YouTube, it's a lot harder to be able to watch longer clips and stuff from the film. So that's something we look forward to doing with you guys. On Discord. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. I got some pictures, you know, I'm going to show you. So as Patricia and Sheila talk, first thing that Sheila says to Patricia is, oh, when are you going to have another baby? When are you going to have another baby, Pat? That's not going to happen. Uh, that's a tough question. Like, I feel like. So inappropriate. Like, that. Yeah. even though you may feel, oh, it's been a couple years, so this person should be over it. It's just still like if they're not bringing it up, I don't know. I just feel like, listen, those are sensitive issues, you know, for people and uh, let people bring up issues about their childlessness or if they're going to have a baby or when it's going to happen. It is incredibly freaking rude. And I don't care how close you think you are to a person unless you are like, you know, you're their ace, ace, ace. Even the way that question is phrased is just like bogus. Part of it is how you say that, how you bring it up. But is it any kind is it different than when Patricia is saying, don't tell Sheila about her man sneaking around her back, behind her back. Well, it's no different. Like, she's not ready. You know what I'm yeah. saying? She's not ready to bring up this about a baby or Sheila's not ready to be told that her husband was doing this. 
Right. I mean, and she's not. Well, I just I don't know. There's a part of it that's like respectful. It's one thing that's an obvious stuff like, you know, her husband cheating on her and that whole thing. Yeah. But it's another thing when you're aggressing. And even though you don't mean any harm, because, I mean, Sheila did not mean any harm in this moment. She yeah. wants she's had her baby. She wants Pat to be happy. She's realized the joy of chi- of motherhood and she wants to share that. But that is not Pat's yeah. reality. And that ain't probably what Pat wants to hear. And with Sheila and what was going on with Mike, that's actionable, right? Like yeah. I'm telling you this because you're in this terrible situation that you can have an exit out from, you know? Yeah. And you don't know the reason why they haven't had another baby. You know, is it, I mean, you know, uh, is, 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 is she getting to be too far along or they having trouble getting pregnant again? I mean, you know, in this moment, you really don't know. Yeah. But you do know what happened to the other kids, so you know, but you asking yeah. questions. So, yeah. But Pat responds, that's not going to happen. And so then she quickly changes the subject and she's like, well, how's the house? And then, you know, Sheila is more comfortable to talk about her own situation. And how is Troy adjusting to the South? Uh, he's having trouble finding a job. Oh. And they um, discuss about the fact that Troy's having trouble finding a job and uh, that Sheila feels bad because she's the one who wanted to leave Colorado to be closer to her friends and her mother. I wanted us to leave Colorado, you know, just to be closer to, to my mom and, and, yes. and you guys. You want to be close to your friends, but you won't even see them. Like at the beginning of the scene, she's like, uh, I'll show you some pictures. Why you this baby ain't brand new. Why is Troy having a hard time finding a job? Oh so my gosh. it's let's say at least seven other people, right, who have careers and have connections and everything. Uh huh. And Hey, Sheila's new husband, Troy's here. He needs a job. Somebody put the word out. You know what I'm saying? Hey, go and talk to so-and-so. Maybe because it's a secret. Yeah. And this is where... (laughs) That's what Sheila did in the first film, kept the secret that she was even in Colorado. And this is the question that I feel like I have. Because in these situations, Troy's having trouble finding a job. Sheila has a network. She could put the word out. But then it could be embarrassing or people might feel vulnerable well, about that. That's why you do it ahead. Hey, y'all, we're moving from Colorado to Atlanta. Troy's going to need a job. You know, y'all keep a lookout. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a real good point. That's a nice way to do it where it doesn't make you seem deficient because you have this need. And it's just like relying on your uh, network. But the other part about it, and I think we see this as the film moves on, is that Troy is an outsider still, right? Because he hasn't gotten to know all of these people personally. These are not his friends. These are Sheila's friends. Yeah. You know, so I could understand there being some level of of discomfort, you know, with just putting it out there. And she pushed to leave, you know, Colorado. And Troy is just having trouble adjusting. He's having trouble adjusting to the South, (laughs) you know, maybe just the weather. As an army brand. You know, IA. And probably just in a perpetual bad mood because he's got a lot of pressure on him. And and he doesn't know where his money is coming from. Yeah. And probably the move wasn't the best financial move for their family. Like, you got everything you need in Colorado, but you want to be over here and it's going to cost us a lot of money. Troy is having Sheila lead. Shut up. (laughs) Do y'all think that's true? Troy is having Sheila lead. Go to the comments and let us know. You know, I never even thought about that Sheila was leading in this. Um, Well, she's like, hey, let's I don't know if it's leading, but she is being very suggestive to have him. Hey, let's leave Colorado. Go to where I'm from and uproot everything and all this good stuff we have here so that you can be over there struggling. I think it's more like as far as why he would comply. I I feel like he's like I want to see my wife happy yeah. and well, you that's know how it works. and but and and what's her pressure cell that hard? Like I don't really know, but ooh, Sheila Lee. I'm pretty sure Troy didn't just out the blue say let's move to Atlanta. I'm sure yeah. she's the one. She even admits that she's the one who pressed that. So ooh. yeah. So there we go. Now we are where we are. Ah, how was your flight? <sighs> So then we see or we we hear, you know, turmoil at the car before we ever see anybody come in. But we have Diane and Terry who come in first. And of course, Angela and Marcus are back out arguing somewhere outside. And they're talking about what a pain in the butt it has been this travel with the the other couple. But they, you know, welcome them and everything like that. And they're, you know, joking around. 
So then Terry decides that he wants to go out with the jet skis with Troy and whatever. And so he leaves. Oh, man, is that Troy out there? Can I go? <laughs> yes, you can go. Okay. And I'll get into this more uh, on the video we do about Diane and Terry. But I, he was like, can I go? Can I go? You know, I, I like a little kid. I don't know. I just didn't like that. Like, I feel is this really how this character would behave? But maybe he's just so giddy that he finally got his son that, you know. He's just a whole new man. Anyway, the ladies are left by themselves to kind of chop it up until Marcus and Angela come in. You no, know, you act like you rich because you on TV. You know that, right? Oh, and did wow. you really have to talk football the whole way with that guy? So then we see that Angela and Marcus come in. They're arguing just like they were in the first movie. This is how they roll into the uh, retreat. So they're just going on and on. And everybody's just watching them almost pretty much just give a show. And then... Tyler Perry has them both say, why did I get married and why did I get married to? Don't wonder, why did I get married? Why did I get married to? But not in a way that Patricia said it goes in the study. Like we ask ourselves, why did I get married? They're asking it in a way of it being rhetorical that I should not be married yes. or that there's problems with being married <laughs> to this person. I came here to drink. Those famous margaritas, Pat. <laughs> margaritas. Oh, margaritas. 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 <laughs> So the women agree that they're going to have some drinks at Angela's prompting. And, uh, you know, we see them kind of separate, kind of like they did in the first movie where, you know, the women go all off together and the men go all off together to have their, you know, respective gender uh, based discussions. It's your first time here? Yeah. The Bahamas are great, man. It's paradise down here. I'm telling you. So the guys are all out there uh, sitting on the beach on the jet skis and whatever and they're having their guy talk about how crazy women are or whatever and gavin asks troy he says you know is this your first time here and troy says yeah and you know that makes me think about how um maybe even though troy was an army brat maybe once he settled in colorado he really didn't probably travel a whole lot because you know these guys clearly have traveled all kind of places and you know well they seem to be i guess affluent right and they're going out on these vacations to these plate these destinations for you know the americans right so you've been in the bahamas you've probably been to resort places in jamaica and cancun and, yeah. and all that so yeah so he bring up did you go no he hasn't gone but he may have been places now where he's talking with sheila we don't have the money you know we spent all our money to do this before maybe he didn't have the money to go on vacations or he was spending his time as a sheriff or you know yeah what I'm saying? and just maybe stacking his yeah. money and, and and kind of preparing for things yeah and if you're traveling around as a kid with your father in the military then you're probably not going to you know vacation destinations so you know during this long conversation that's going on troy is mostly observing the guys because i did wonder like how was troy gonna fit with the group you know, is how are they welcoming or not? And they seem very welcoming to Troy in the group. And what's funny is after he has observed everything with the group, then, you know, he starts to warm up a little to them. And he's like, you know, y'all fellas are crazy as they're talking about all these women and their wives and whatever's going on. Y'all fellas are crazy. Man. <laughs> yeah, we all nuts, man. We all nuts. Nuts to be married. <laughs> And they ask him, how are things with you and Sheila? And he's like, things are good. The baby is good. And, you know, we good. Like you and Sheila, how's it going with you two? Good. And, they, and the baby's good. Basically, he's going to keep his mask up. So he's not going to be like, can't find a job and I'm stressed. You know, he doesn't know him like that yet, I guess. Right. So he still is very much on the I'm on the periphery of this friendship and I really can't confide in you guys. So he is being dishonest, basically, in this moment. He's not being real with them. But I can't blame him for, no, you know, he's just keeping his business to himself. Yeah, because part of it, too, is like they these men gossip mm -hmm. because they're talking about how, oh, how Mike told us that Sheila said the reason they couldn't have a baby was because of Sheila when it ended up being Mike. And, you know, like, yeah, yeah, man. And it was Mike that led us to believe that Sheila couldn't conceive. Uh, it was good that he really ain't divulging at this moment, but. I think it's part of his character, too, where he's more reserved than the other ones. And Terry seems to take the lead. And we'll talk about this in another video in about him. But he is a different character from the first film. The mm -hmm. first film, he was more like the mentor we talked about. And now he's just trying to tell jokes the whole time and be funny. Most of it, he's talking about how Angela is, talking about this man's wife. And then when Troy decides to say something, his comment is about 
Mike's wife. No, 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 no. Ain't nobody worse than Angela. Oh, you, Wait a minute, you know, you. <laughs> Angela. Which is weird. Like, he's like, ain't nobody worse than Angela. And I'm like... I mean, no, no disrespect. She's out there, man. She's somewhere else. Troy is chiming in, so... And then uh, Terry's all like, you'll fit right in with this group, man. You know? What you trying to say? <laughs> hey, you gonna fit in right around here. I'm telling I mean, you that. So, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. But it does... I, I'm glad that Troy does seem like maybe he's making friends in this new place. Even though the, you went to the Bahamas to make friends when y'all should have been hanging out in Atlanta in between you looking for a job. But, you know, it doesn't seem like that. It doesn't seem like they ever see each other in Atlanta. No, because one of the things that Sheila... And Patricia were talking about Sheila was like, I'll let you see some pictures of the kid that yeah. she had. Like, come on now. But I guess back then you would get your pictures, mail them out or whatever. Or when you see the person, you give them their little, I don't even remember the sizes, but the little small ones. And then the ones that was a little bigger than those. Man, you talk about 1985. <laughs> this is 2010. In 2010, you could have emailed them pictures or texted those pictures. <laughs> I think 2010, In people 2010, were still you were giving physical pictures, they though. They probably were. But 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 in 2010, you were also texting pictures. Come yeah, on. Yeah. So you were texting videos in 2010. They, don't, they still don't talk. iPhones were around by the end. So. Your book... He cheated, so now what? Okay. So the ladies are all inside having drinks and chit-chatting, talking about Pat's latest book. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> called, Pat's latest book called, He Cheated, Now What? <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Okay, clearly this isn't a study book, at least. You know, they get into this conversation basically about having your spouse's password to their cell phone. In point, I don't have the password to my husband's cell phone. I trust him. And so Angela is talking about, you know, how she wants the password to Marcus's cell phone. So when I read that, I asked Marcus for the password to his cell phone. If I don't trust him, then I should have it. And they're all sharing whether they have the passwords or not, right? And so then you have Sheila, and she's, Sheila's like, I trust that man. I don't have his password. I, I trust him. I don't have Troy's. I trust that man. Patricia says she does not have Gavin's password, but Diane says that she does have Terry's password, right? I trust Terry, but I do have his. And this just got me to thinking. Y'all, go to the comments. Do you have the password of your significant other if you do? Or a way to mm. get into their phone? I think they missed a spot here, but I guess it's different, you know, 13 years ago. You can have the password, but do you, are you searching for something on the phone? Yeah, like, are you going through phones? And I mean, this is clearly a sensitive issue, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, there are people who will go through phones. But just the question is, do you give your significant other access to your phone? And I mean, there might be times when they need to do, you know, make a call, whatever the deal might be. I don't think that if you just have a bait, like, I don't know, I guess I don't see a problem with it, you know, because at the same time, it's like, all right, if you got a computer, do they have the password to your computer? Can they see all your emails? Can they see, all, you know, and the question is, are you going looking? Are you going snooping and looking for things or are you not? And, you know, at the end of the day. Maybe that's where the trust comes in, right? Yeah. Because they make it about trust of whether or not you can trust the person. So you need their password. But the person who gives it to you have to trust you not to just be going around snooping and stuff. Yeah. But like <laughs> in 2023, now it's like not, not even, I mean, you can have a key code password, but you know, mostly you're using your fingerprint now. Yeah, biometrics and you know, your facial. It, maybe exactly. Eyes. And I mean, we have each other's passwords. I mean, not even passwords, but you know. Our, our fingerprints are in each other's phone. I mean, because I'm not on your phone and you're not on my phone like that. But at the same time, you if something came up like, I, I you know, as needed kind of thing. Right. I mean, it's yeah. kind of like why they have the meme about men in their phones. But like if you got to be running through somebody's phone and doing all of that stuff, I, I think that you learn. And this is me as a woman. I just think that you learn over time that if you got to do all that you you just got to step back and ask yourself questions about where what's going on hmm. anyway. Yeah. You know, that's just a symptom of a bigger problem if you got to do all that. But anyway, yeah. that's so what said, we got from huh? here. What we got from here is that Sheila doesn't have Troy's password. And I guess that maybe that was just the zeitgeist of the time about passwords or Tyler Perry created it. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? It became a thing because of this movie. But as they're all sitting, talking, having their drinks, enjoying themselves, boom, who walks in but Mike? 
Ooh, what's going on in here? Everybody's like, Mike, what are you doing here? Oh, Mike, what are you doing here? Oh, I was hoping Marcus divorced your ass. And he's like, <laughs> I own part of the timeshare and I'm here to have a good time. I own part of a timeshare. I'm here to have a good time. Okay, the timeshares work where you would like block out the time <laughs> that you plan to spend at the timeshare, like as a owner of the timeshare. So if the group blocked out their time, you can't just show up without them knowing. Bruh. And if you feel like you're part of the quote unquote group that owns the timeshare, like, I don't know, maybe the three of them, the the four couples own it together. I don't know. But that would be weird, too, to me. I just need I don't uh, this excuse doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So when when did they get into the timeshare? Is this where all Sheila and Troy's money went into a timeshare, not into paying for a vacation or it goes into the timeshare and then you pay for travel and all this other stuff and like help me understand is it part of that yearly thing that they do and now they just happen to do it at one of at, at one of their one time of their timeshares and i mean if they were going to pick one because this is a few years after the first one so this is the first one's 2007 this is 2010 but like even in movie time i think maybe slightly more time than the three years had passed explain to me how it is that you're at this timeshare and they don't know you're coming and they don't, you know, how yeah. did you get the dates? Like, And he just, just decided to come during this time and say, this is the only time I could use my timeshare. Unless, is this a timeshare? The whole thing is a timeshare? And each of them have a room and, you know, you get an apartment, quote unquote, yeah, but right? Your room is the, the your part share? of the timeshare, right? Yeah. right you, you know, but not, you not the come entire this, house. You got to come this at the same time that you heard that everybody else was going to be there? Well, see, that makes sense. But I was just thinking the logistics of a timeshare because I'm used to like thinking, OK, timeshare is like a condo when you say you have. But I guess oh, they all maybe have they all put in for one portion of a timeshare. Right. Mm -hmm. So they have a timeshare together. Not that they each put in for it their separate portion of this one. You know but what I'm, I'm saying? But I'm thinking that maybe that's the only way this makes sense is if they put in their separate portion. So, so but the separate portion, then you come at a different time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you want to crash the party, so you come at the same time, right? Yeah. So so that's all I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is like time. the, the other part about the way the timeshares work is like I'm used to it being condo situation where the whole building is timeshares and let's say they have 30 apartments or whatever. So then you 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 have a timeshare as long as one of the 30 apartments is available and you have your timeshare, then you can go. Right. So what I'm saying is that this that place, is individual and its rooms, not just. Yeah. That it's individual. The, like so you let's just assume that it's like a, a suite. So your individual timeshare is your room that you have with your husband. Right. And each of them have their own. And they say we all go in on the same week and they coordinated when they would block their time. So off. was Mike's with his wife? Well, Mike's is maybe just on his own now because it's been a few years and presumably this timeshare is maybe a new thing. So he got his own thing. You see what I'm saying? To just, uh, to just crash the party, right? So he's like, I have part of this timeshare too. Or maybe they had it before. Like, I don't know. But, but I there's just think questions. it don't make sense. There's questions. But, you know. Anyway, so Mike shows up and everybody is just disturbed by his presence. Sheila won't even look at him. She's like just staring out the window because she cannot believe that he has shown his butt up. And I can only imagine that, you know, at a time where you already got stress and situations with your husband, then you got this fool showing up, you know, for whatever reason, you don't even want to know what is going on with him. Just like, are you serious? Mike don't let her, you know, keep looking out the window. He got to speak to her directly because she doesn't say a word to him prior to this. And he's like, hello, Sheila. I heard you had a baby. Congratulations in his nasally voice. Hello, Sheila. I hear you had a baby. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Well, so in this movie, it's a little different. The first one you had Trina basically was the third wheel. And now we have Mike. I'm not going to let your insults hurt me, Cruella. I'm going to see the fellas. Oh, that's ridiculous. ridiculous. They should have had another woman, basically. You know, Mike is basically like, he got his bags. He's going to stay. And he's headed out to see the guys. And like how the, just the overall audacity for him to show up knowing that Sheila and her husband are here. But, you know, that's why he's here, quite frankly. What the hell is he doing here? Who? Hey, fellas! Are you serious? Mike shows up outside and all the guys are sitting there talking. They're like, well, what? Is that Mike? And then Mike shows up and... It's like, what are you doing here, bro? <laughs> what are you doing here, Mike? 
He's like, my portion of the timeshare. I'm part of the timeshare. And as soon as Troy sees Mike, he puts his sunglasses on and does a Sheila, basically trying to ignore him and act like he doesn't see him. Yeah. But Mike will <clears throat> not be ignored. He's like, hello, Sheriff. Congratulations on the baby, you know? Hello, Sheriff. What's up? Congratulations on the baby. And did you name him Mike Jr.? Jr.? Like, Mike is just so despicable. Yeah. You name him Mike Jr.? I wonder what women think of Troy and how he reacted to Mike and this whole situation. You know, you might have been able to do that had you taken care of your business the first time. I think that Troy played it cool and that was the right thing to do because he's trying not to set it off. They didn't they didn't spend their last. If he gets in a brawl with Mike and they got to leave tonight, that's going to be a problem. But Sheriff, don't you worry, man. It's all good. I ain't worried. So he's just trying to play it cool. And he seems like a cool guy anyway. And so, you know, he's just trying not to set it off. But Mike is pushing him, which is the whole point of what Mike does. Did you name him Mike Jr.? And so then he's like, you might have been able to do that. It had you taken care of your business the first time and whatever. Mm. So like he's not satisfied. And the question that I wonder is, remember when we were discussing them before, whether or not maybe Troy and Mike could have eventually gotten cool with one another if, you know, it was like, all right, so Mike Tro Troy married Sheila, Mike went on with Trina, and then they could just be cordial, not like friend friends or anything, but just cordial, right? They, can, they could coexist in this, you know, group of friend group couple groups, right? But Mike... Mike would not let that happen. He wouldn't let it happen before. We saw how he was talking at the banquet. You married my ex. You, you know, and all of that. And, you know, so, because mm -hmm, Sheriff Troy walks up. Congratulate him. You know, him and Sheila got married. Right, right. And then, you know, he's all like, he married my ex. He married my ex. You and he married my you. ex. I don't know. How do you, th what do you think about the way Troy reacted? He act like a little punk. Where you going? I'm gonna check on my wife. This dude just comes straight up with the disrespect and these little quips back supposed to just make it seem like he's just doing something. But he, that wasn't hard enough. Like, you need to say something else. So what do you think should have happened? Like, if you were going to play this out and Troy okay. was going to not be a punk, what Let's would see. Happen? Mike came up and what did he say? Mike said something about how you doing, Troy? He or, said, hello, Sheriff. Hello, Sheriff. Congrats on the baby. Yeah. Yeah, but he said something after that. The disrespectful stuff. You know, mm -hmm. congrats on the baby. Yeah, appreciate it. And then he say, oh, did you name him Mike Jr.? Right. Uh, No, I wouldn't give my son a bitch name. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You can't Why say would that. I name my son after a bitch made ass nigga? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> That's how it's gonna go. <laughs> who's shooting blanks? Why would a nigga who's shooting blanks have a junior? You know what I'm like? Come on. That's, <laughs> you gotta okay. go hard, but you know, the writer wanted to take it easy on them or I don't know, make Troy look a, you know, like a, a nice, respectable man. Like, and then he just walked off and stuff after he kept going. Nah, yeah, man. he was like, you know, and he like, where you going? But that's that whole, you know, when they go low, we go high. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Like, I feel that there's a thing where a person could Troy have been the guy that was so sweet and so nice, but that, you know, you don't want to bring out the junkyard dog in him. Right. But he's nice otherwise. Why couldn't he have been that? But in this moment, eh, his response was like, OK, yeah, but there's the point where I always wish that like Troy would have just been a little more aggressive, kind of like right when Mike was talking to Sheila all in her face at the retreat. I mean, not at the retreat, at the banquet. Come on, Sheila, don't be like that. What do you want, Mike? I'm trying to listen to Patricia. I feel like Troy, <laughs> Troy could have turned around and been like. Can I help you? You know, uh, <laughs> like. But Troy pulled the sitcom run up the stairs thing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, go and check on my wife. Well, you that, know, how is that a dig for somebody who didn't really want her? Or how though? Red ran across the street. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> In Friday. <laughs> Okay, for real. I'm not going to rag on it because I feel like I, I'm, I'm not blaming Troy. No. I'm blaming Tyler Perry because I feel like you didn't change the character and I don't like the changes I'm seeing thus far. 
Yeah, but that was him. Like, he was the guy who had the comeback at the banquet or whatever. He had comebacks. So that's yeah. just what he does. So he was consistent in the comebacks, but it was, if, given the situation, it was kind of It wasn't weak. at the level that was given to him. Man, you done let this dude speak on your wife and your child. Yeah. Like, no. So Troy leaves. He's going to check on his wife. And Mike is trying to, like, still be a cohesive group with these other guys. Oh, come on, you know, because the other guys are like, yeah, we're leaving, too. We going in the house. All right, come on, Marcus. Nah, man, the wake effects got me sitting on the sidelines, brother. Everybody hates Mike is basically the way this ends. But my thing is, why y'all just didn't tell Mike to go? Again, this is the Second same time. question we had after the first movie. You show up with Trina, you foul. Why y'all didn't tell him? Why do you put Mike's butt out? Tell him to go. But they, they won't do it this time either. And Troy might not be in the right position to say, hey, you have to leave because everybody else is there. And, you know, he's lesser in the friend group and all. But like, come on, Terry got something to say about everything else. But Terry just going to laugh it off. Gavin and all y'all, y'all just sat up there and, you know. And in this situation, you know, Mike is the foul one. Yeah. Mike betrayed so, all y'all sitting around at this circle. Hmm. So should the other guy say something? Yes. Hmm. They should have been like, man, somebody should have just pulled Mike over and been like, look, Mike, you got to go, man. Nobody wants you guy. here. Yeah. Nobody wants you here. We wouldn't have a movie, but like somebody's got to <laughs> be still reasonable. Have a movie. <laughs> somebody's got to be reasonable. And none of these characters, none of these men are reasonable in this situation. They're all quick to just be like, oh, well, you know. And then, look, I mean, Mike come out dogging Angela. You talking about this man's wife up in his face like it's nothing. He's just, Mike is disrespectful. Just such a scoundrel. He's not staying. He can't stay. He can't. Terry, there's no way. So they're all sitting downstairs now. All the couples, everyone except Mike and Troy are there. And so she was there with her friend couples and they're all talking about, well, you know, and the women are expressing like, Mike got to go. He got to go. They all say he has to go. The men are like, mm, what are we going to do? Let's be rational. Sheila, we can try to control him. Yeah, no, we all remember Colorado and the dinner table. Okay. Terry is talking about, we, you know, we could try to control him. And yeah. Right. We are adults. We can handle this. Come on. I, I, I don't want to hear it. Bruh. Gavin's got a point. We really need to be rational about this. Rational. This is supposed to be like the greatest amongst us, right? All high achievers, basically the talented tenth, and they can't come up with a good plan to, you know, basically tell this guy to get out. Tell this here. fool he got yeah. to go. And then I think it was Gavin talking about you're a lawyer. You can't, you can't tell him he can't stay. Hey, you're a lawyer. He paid his money. We can't tell him he can't be here. You can talk to him and, you know, all you got to do is, hey, as a group, we're going to talk to this guy. Hey, bro, we don't want you here. We think you should leave. Right. That's what I'm saying. Hey, and then if he won't leave, then you shun him. You don't include him in any group activities. He come around, you go somewhere else and he going to feel so unwelcomed. He may just leave on his own. But it's something you have to do instead of just like we're going to just be cordial, include him in everything and act like nothing's wrong because we're adults and rational. And if we're not rational, then we're ghetto. Yeah, like, like that's the stupidest the... thing I ever heard in my life. No, no, y you but and and I'm surprised none of these women were like to their husbands, like, uh, make, get get him out of here. What yeah. you mean? We gonna be rational? <laughs> rational. It is rational to not just include the guy. Everybody has agreed that he shouldn't be here. So it's quote have an intervention, Mike. Nobody wants you here, bruh. Yeah. If I go somewhere and. Eight people come to me and be like, hi, we don't want you here. You're making everybody un uncomfortable. I'm not staying there, bro. Yeah. Like, and I think on. Mike would have left. I really do think Mike would leave if they all asked him to leave. But the thing is, he knows he's being a thorn in the side, but he's just like, all right, fine. I'll That's be just, that because you're not making me go. Like all these people couldn't come up with anything besides just act like it's not happening. It's foolishness. So I guess he's staying. Okay, look, we're not going to give him any power. Then Sheila's like, well, I guess he's staying at this point. So it's like she's let down by her friends again. 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 Then Diana's all like, oh, we're not going to give him any power. Wait, what? You You're giving him, him power, power by letting him sit up in your face and play in your face. Hello? I just, I mean, I'm outraged just by this whole, and I done paid money to be here. 
<laughs> oh no, oh no. But then if it isn't already bad enough for Sheila, <laughs> Sheriff Troy walks down those stairs and he's like, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? And he got that look on his face. You already know. Talk to you for a minute. It's not gonna be good. And Mike is, it, it's so like him. I don't care nothing about that. So when they get in the room, Sheila is all flustered because Mike is there. And she's like, you know, I ain't telling him to come. I don't know what, you know, what's going on. He like, I don't care nothing about that. So he's saying he don't care about Mike. He says, why did you have to tell them that we spent our last? Why do you have to tell them that? That we spent our last? Because that's one of the things that Sheila said when she was downstairs with the group, like as to why Mike should go. We, we spent our last to be here. We're not leaving. Guys, guys, come on. Let's everybody calm down. Sheriff Troy is also like, I don't want them to know that. Maybe I don't, I don't want them to know that. Have you told them how hard it is for us right now? And they have this back and forth about everything. But at the end, she's like, oh, you know, they're our friends. And he's like, nah, they're your friends. They're our friends. They're your friends. I barely know them. And I don't want them all in our business. And I don't want them all in our business. I definitely don't want that damn fool to know. Trust me, she says, they're really good people. But trust me, they're really good people. I don't want them in our business. It won't happen again. Well, these are the same people that sat up and let sat in your face while your husband was cheating with his uh, side yeah. hoe sitting right at the table with you. And, and right now they're you. like, let, let, uh, let's not tell Mike to leave. It's yeah, just... let, let, let her ex-husband sit up in here and harass her and her, her new husband. Uh, and it's all good with us. Trust me, they're really good people. And he's like, I don't want them in our business. I'm serious. And I mean, I think that Troy has like, it's not even about if they were friends. They have proven that they're very gossipy and that your business will be out there. And he, he was at that table in the first film. <laughs> yeah, he don't like how they operate. And I can't blame him. I cannot blame Troy for that. And he's like, I'm serious. He got to put his foot down because Sheila is over here acting with her head in the clouds like she doesn't see what's going on with her friends. I would be pissed if my friend, what do you mean he's staying? Like y'all done decided I got to live with this. It ain't y'all who have to live with that mess. It's not equal and it's not fair. So yeah, the troubles are brewing. Nothing. Hey, why didn't Troy come? You sit next to our house guest <laughs> over there. So. so the guys are all out on a fishing excursion. Well, the guys minus Troy, because Mike then took Troy's place on the fishing trip. Yeah. And someone asked, why didn't Troy come? Mm -hmm. And then everybody starts laughing and stuff. <laughs> You're sitting right next to him. To Mike. Guess, blah, blah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So does the timeshare include boat time? You know, mm. and why did they allow Mike to be there? We just talked about it. Right. So y'all like, oh, we're going to go out and do things with Mike. And Troy was absolutely right that they aren't his friends because they are Mike's friend. Right. Yeah. Yep. They're here fishing with Mike and to exclude Troy. Basically, it's what happens. You like, hey, Mike, come on, let's go. We're going to do this. But why are y'all including him if you really don't want him there? That's exactly it. So you're just trying to play both ends against the middle and you foul for that. All y'all, you know. But one thing we did find out about Mike, because we had questions before, like what was his profession? And so Mike talks about the, you know, financial uh, issues and whatever in the world and whatever, and that his firm held. How'd you guys uh, make it out in the market? Oh, my firm held, man. So it seems like he's in finance. Maybe he's a stockbroker or something. He talked about somebody who, you know, basically uh, off themselves or whatever as a result of this market crash, et cetera. So maybe he's a stock, uh, you know, he's in stocks. And then he talked about the fact that, oh, uh, yeah, I need to tell Sheila about that because we had dinner with him or whatever. You know, in fact, I got to tell Sheila about that because we had dinner with him a couple of times. So somebody that they knew in their former life. And he goes all into this whole thing about, um, well, he makes the proclamation that Sheila, you know, that she misses me. Whatever. I don't care what y'all say. Sheila missed me. Wow. Look, we had some good times. And then he confesses, I miss Sheila. I don't know what the hell I was thinking letting her go. Yeah. I miss her, okay? I miss her. Hold on a second. I just don't know what the hell I was thinking letting her go. And that's why he's here. And none of these guys can get it that, oh, he's saying he missed Sheila, and that's why he's here because... Uh, she Sheila is happy mar happily married and we're excluding Troy and hanging with the guy who's basically just here because he's just trying to squeeze back in between and get with Sheila. Yeah, he's like interrupting <laughs> her happiness and then, you know, or trying to. And then he's like, you know, I was looking back at my life and you know how you find that old girl that you dogged out, blah, blah, yeah. blah. Find that old girl that you dogged out. You wish you knew then what you know now. That's all. He should have brought up the 
80-20 rule. Oh, my gosh. That would have just sealed it. But the guys are all sent, telling him, like, she's happily married now, you know. And then, was it Gavin who was like, she's happily married now, in spite of the fact that he hasn't found a job. Happily married in Fast spite forward. of the fact that he hasn't found a job yet. Oh. Like, these are some of the most gossipy, just, uh. Why did you have to say that, Gavin? Don't tell him you that. You know, job where he laying on the couch? He jobless. <laughs> Why did you have to put so so like you really aren't like you just said you are not Troy's friend? If this is you know you gonna divulge this kind of information to Mike and you know how Mike is, yeah. like that just wasn't even right. He's okay with Mike being here, but he got mad because I said we spent our last. The ladies are out having a massage. And they're discussing things. And, you know, the first thing that Sheila says to her friends pretty much is that Troy was upset because she told the group that they had spent their last to be there, be there on this trip. And I'm like, girl, are you just not getting the point? The point is that he don't want you divulging all y'all business. But the first thing you do at the first opportunity is you start going and venting back to them about your business. Maybe you could respect the fact that because it's not just your business, it's y'all's business maybe you could just pull that back a little bit respect the fact that he doesn't want certain things discussed you just keep letting the runaway train roll and this this is not going to lead to something good yeah but what she also said was troy's okay with mike being here no he's not hmm. like what <laughs> that's how she what? well maybe that's she interpreted it? that because he said i'm not even worried about that or something right but i mean okay. in the hierarchy of things he was more mad about her t divulging mm -hmm. their personal business but at the end of the day, he didn't like that Mike was there. Yeah. What is Troy doing at this moment? The men are on the boat fishing. They're over here having women spa day. Troy is in the room by himself. Broke. <laughs> Bro. I'm not laughing, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but like when you really put it into perspective like that, girl, listen, you wanted a good man. Does she know Troy? It's just back at the whatever, the beach house. I don't know. No, she wasn't wrong, but it is different than when you were married to Mike. Oh, I know that. So then it comes out pretty much because one of them says, you know, it's different than when you were married to Mike, about financially different. <laughs> and this man has so much on his mind and he probably feels really bad that he can't give you what you used to. Troy doesn't have as much money as Mike. I mean, so if that was just alluded to in the past... It has been made a fact as we, this discussion goes on. But I never made him feel bad about that. I don't, I don't care about that stuff. And, and then she was like, but I never made him feel bad about that and blah, 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 you know. So. You did by telling everybody. Yeah. Difficult. And I think that Sheila is messing up, you know, and in the, in the first one, it was like Sheila was this sympathetic character who. You know, you're just like, man, this guy is dogging her out. She gets this new opportunity. She feels bad about herself, but you can understand why. And in this one, she feels a lot better about herself, right? She's got her confidence and everything, but she's operating in a space where it's like, girl, are you paying attention to what's happening? And some of this you're bringing on yourself. Yeah, but that's kind of how it was in the first one, right? She was just oblivious to what was going on and all mm. of that. So, you know, I guess that's kind of in line with who her character is. So Dr. Patricia is actually giving advice talk to Angela about her relationship with Marcus, but she makes this statement, when people change in relationships, it causes panic. When people tend to change in relationships, it causes us to be afraid, and then we panic. And it's interesting because Sheila's face at that exact moment is kind of like, hmm. So in her mind, I think Sheila is feeling like maybe Troy changed. That's how I interpreted that, that look. That he's she panicking? Had. That he's or not that secure. he's panicking, that he's not secure, that yeah, he so has changed. That's the problem when people take uh, quotes and take them literally and they try to apply it to every situation. Hmm. Like you see all the time when somebody just randomly posts something on social media. This is what they're doing. They're just taking a little sliver of what somebody said that's out of context and everything and apply it to a very specific situation and then try to apply it elsewhere in their life. And then now I got to cut everybody off. <laughs> <laughs> She just took this phrase and now you're just oh. applying it to a situation that it doesn't apply to. Yeah, she's she's applying it to her own life because of what Patricia said to somebody yeah. else. You took a phrase and then you just take it to, quote, be gospel and then apply it to things like, yeah, just don't do that. I would say never. Well, and in this even case, like what I just said when I said, don't do that ever. Don't do it ever. <laughs> <laughs> in this case, I think that what she should do 
is she should have just gotten since you telling your business anyway just go ahead and get your specific remedy from dr patricia <laughs> and then you, then you would know right but instead you're you know kind of like your wheels are turning in your own mind and you're trying to apply what she then told you about angela yeah and angela Marcus' so, situation is very different we're gonna talk about it in patricia's video but patricia is out here ruining relationships <laughs> because with the book angela took some logic that she had in there and applied proper logic to her situation about the password and now sheila is doing the same thing it's like oh troy must be insecure because based on i'm a doctor's mm -hmm logic then this Man. must hold true patricia been ruining relationships since at least 2007 when the first <laughs> movie came out <laughs> oh, give us board man. come on baby you gotta have more than that no i don't later that night they're all playing spades all the couples and mike sheila and troy are you know partners or whatever playing spades and he, trying to figure out how many books he has and he's like oh you know i want to go board or whatever and Mike is behind Troy and he's like, oh, man, you know, you got a good hand and you, you know, you sh basically that he should go over more than board. I'm looking at at least three books in your hand right there, sir. Mike. It just creates this whole dynamic because now he's behind him trying to tell him what to do with his hand. Look, you got a hand like that. You got to know what to do with it. I guess if anybody knows what to do with a good hand, it would be you. And then Sheila jumps in and she's like, you know, let that man do whatever. So she tries to tell him off. And it just doesn't work. So, Troy, how's life in Atlanta? And what I feel like, in a way, is the fact that Sheila spoke up and continues to try to speak up to protect Troy, understandably, is like almost emasculating him a little bit in the situation. Life is good. Thank you. I was talking to him. Right. Yeah, but why is Mike there? And why didn't Troy say anything? Please, let's play cards. Come on. He can't speak for himself. Because Troy didn't respond, so she felt she had to say something. That's true, so too. He emasculated himself. Right. And then he got his little quip and Angela's like, ooh, I like him, you know, yeah. and all this bull. What? I like this guy. She'll have you quick on your feet, buddy. That's right. Mm. But Gavin tried to say, come on, let's go take a walk or whatever. And Mike doesn't want to. Mike, why don't we go take this uh, walk? Why don't we do that? You know, I'll skip ahead and say once Troy really got into him, then... Mike decided, all right, yeah, I guess we'll go for that walk and leave now. If y'all would have done what we talked about minutes ago, mm -hmm. and Mike would not be here. Exactly. Like, why is y'all sitting around playing cards with Mike there? Everywhere Mike goes, all right, let's get up and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. He going to get the picture or say something. Because all of this stuff, he's talking about house life in Atlanta and, you know, all this house to job search. How's the job search? Nobody says anything at the dinner in part one. Everybody was like, no, stop now, Mike. You're getting dangerous. Don't tell her right now, Angela. They always had something to say to the person. But when it's Mike saying something in this situation, then everyone is just completely quiet and allowing him to just do whatever. Right. Because he just busts out and asks, how's the job search? You know, this man doesn't have a job. And you're like, how's the job search? You know, on the boat, you were like, what is he doing? Sleeping on the couch? You know, that kind of thing. So like almost suggesting uh, something about the Sheriff Troy's character in this situation. And so then Troy is pissed and he lets him have it in the Sheriff Troy kind of way. I'm not the kind of cat that's going to sit here and act like I like you because I don't. And he's basically like, you know, leave me and mine the hell alone and nurse show drink. I don't even like the fact that you're here, but since you are here, sit there. And you can see that he ain't playing with him no more. Nurse your little fruit juice and leave me and mine the hell alone. When he saw that he wasn't playing with him, then that's when Mike backs off. Yeah. Yeah, I had nothing. All right. I'm out. Is everybody just scared that Mike is going to reveal more secrets that he ain't let out yet? I don't know. But like every secret Mike gets, he's going to say. Yeah, but so how would he be know. getting secrets at this point? That's the, that's the whole point. Why is he even in your presence? <laughs> what? But what's so crazy is after that, the look on Sheila's face after uh, Troy tells Mike off is kind of like this look of satisfaction. Like, see, mm -hmm, you got what you deserve, right? Appreciate it. But then the look on Troy's face. Oh, my gosh. Troy's nostrils was flared. He was pissed. And he looked at her, you know, or whatever. But what's funny is when she was telling him off earlier, when Sheila was telling Mike off earlier in the conversation, Troy looked at her, smiled and winked. So like it was kind of like, yeah, baby, you telling her, you know, like. But then when he had to tell him off, 
then he's like totally lost his shit. You know, he's mm-hmm. mad. Yeah. The fact that after it was uh, Mike says what's what's unacceptable, which is insinuating that Troy doesn't have a job. Everybody sits around looking flabbergasted like they can't believe he said what he said. <gasps> oh, my goodness. You know, Mike, <laughs> you know how he rolls. This is why he shouldn't be there. Troy is outside in his drawers, just looking over at the beach and stuff. And then he goes back into bed and, you know, Sheila comes into the bed and she talks about, you know, I didn't say anything to him. Babe, you know, I didn't say anything to him, right? You think that makes me feel good? Talking about she didn't tell Mike that, you know, he was having trouble finding a job and stuff like that. And Troy responds, you think that makes me feel good? Because it's not about whether or not you told him. And, like, I think she know this. Uh, but I guess in a moment like this, you just want to say anything to make things better for you, right? Hmm. So then she's like, I know you've been trying. So like, that's supposed to make him feel good, too. I'm sorry, babe. I know you've been trying. Don't be all because right. Because whether it's about, talk. yeah, about ambition or not, and then don't be mad. Just don't be mad, okay? I'm not. I just want to go to sleep. Because, you know, it's about, you know, how he responds to you. He's bad. He's mad. It makes you feel a certain way, too. And the way y'all uh, interact changes. Yeah, well, I mean, because he's all depressed and sad and, act, you know, acting funny and you're supposed to be on vacation. And, you know, Troy does respond to her that he's not mad or whatever. But, I mean, obviously he's salty. Um whether you want to characterize it as mad, hurt, or whatever, he ain't right. His vibe ain't right. And uh, that's causing problems. And I'm just like, he came and got back in his bed, this little uh, full-size bed. You know how it is on on trips and or these, you know, bed and breakfast type places. They always have these, like, tight, full-size beds, just big enough for two people. Um But then, you know, not big enough to really have super comfort and it's forcing them to have to be close to each other, even though he's salty. So he like turns his back and everything and gets in the bed, try to act like nothing is wrong. Better get that off your chest. I am not going through what I went through with Mike. I'm not going to do that with you. Continue on in bed. Sheila is not having it because he's like, oh, you know, he think he just finna lay down after he act like that. Not talking to me, not touching me, not looking at me. One of the things said early is I ain't Mike. I ain't Mike. Well, you know what? You're sure acting like him. In response to her saying, you know, how he was acting funny and I'm not going through what I went through with Mike with you. He's I ain't Mike. Yeah, well, you're acting like Mike. That's what she tells him. You are putting me in a bad headspace, baby, and it is not good. And so again, we we know how well that line went over before in the first movie. I ain't Mike. Yes, I ain't Mike. That is yeah. the, was the great I thing. I think it still applies here. What the hell is she talking about? What the hell are you talking about? Hmm. We know we saw what Mike was doing. Mike was cheating, brought your friend to the vacation with you right there and was smashing her. So verbally abusing you and all of this. But you try to say that this is him being like Mike. Hmm. What? the? And so she she goes on to say that it's because he's not touching her and treat, you know, basically being affectionate like he normally is. And I'm not going anywhere, Sheila. Why You're aren't not- you looking at me? Why aren't you touching me? And she tells him, mm. you know, you put me in a bad headspace and it's not good. And she tries to bring it back around and say, we're, you know, in this together. And I know you haven't found a job, but we are in this together. And he's like, I don't want to talk about this. Can you please let this go? No. I don't want to talk about this right now. And then she just flips, right? So what really happens, because she tells him, if this is too much for you to deal with, then just go. If this is too much for you to deal with, go. Because I'm not finna do this again. I'm not gonna do this with you or anybody else. You got me? Right? Yeah. And so she was triggered. That's really all this, is, this amounts to. She was triggered because of him not being affectionate to her. Why aren't you acting like my husband? And being <laughs> upset in the moment into feeling, reminding her of how it was with Mike when he was rejecting and talking crazy about her. And now she's feeling like, OK, maybe this means this is going to all fall apart. Good. No, I'm just trying. He said he put her in a bad headspace. Just imagine this is a response to her putting him into a bad headspace where he then uprooted his whole life, moved to Atlanta <laughs> with her and then can't find a job. And then you just go around telling everybody to where the abusive ex is antagonizing him with that information in front of everybody who is her friend. And while he's an outsider and everybody is still friends with 
the ex-husband. And she's salty that and he she, don't want a spoon. Yeah, <laughs> and now she's in a bad head space. <laughs> yeah, they both in a bad head space. But I mean, this is the consequence, right? Every this is the consequence of the sequence of events that occurred. Yeah, but now I'm not saying everything is Sheila's fault because it's not. But dad, girl, you should be reading the room. Yeah, and then she's like, "Why aren't you acting like my husband?" Like what? I don't even know what that's supposed to mean. Why but... aren't you cuddling me and yeah, all the stuff this. that you normally do, right? Why aren't you being affectionate? Yeah, that... he's just having to pay for Mike. Which I'm sure he's had to do the whole time, right? (laughs) Because when you think about all the baggage that Sheila came with from the beginning, how Mike had done her, like he'd been having to pay for Mike the entire time. Mike has been, it's always like this, right? The person before they're getting away with everything. And then the next one who's just nowhere close to what this previous one was. Now he gets all the trouble and all the problems and all the so-called lip and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And the, why aren't you acting like my husband when the other dude was just going around doing everything, living it up? Now, in, in full Tyler Perry fashion, because I really hated what Tyler Perry did or, or was doing to um, the character of Troy. But I guess maybe I could look at it differently because we did ask a poll question. We asked whether or not this movie changed how you felt about Sheriff Troy. And 65% of people said no, 35% of people said yes. And um, I, it didn't change how I felt about Troy, but a couple of people brought up a really good point. They said it changed how they felt about Sheila. And I agree. I feel like Sheila is a little bit different. And maybe we get to see who she really kind of would be outside of all of yeah. the so, you know abuse and stuff. Yeah, then maybe the tables turn when you're not getting abused and you just maybe start to get into abuse. Hmm. Come here. I'm fighting me. Come here. Come here. They continue their conversation. Troy turns back into Sheriff Troy from the first movie and he's like, come here, stop fighting me. You know, like, come on over here. Let me give you some a little affection. Whatever. I don't <laughs> think you understand what this is like for a man like me. I'm yeah. so used to providing and all this. I don't think you understand what this is like for a man like me. I've always been able to provide. And he say the money from the sale of the store just ain't cutting it. It's been months and the money from the sale of the store just ain't cutting it. We got to stop and talk about that. He sold the general store, the store that meant so much to his father. Hey. It's not long before we understand that Sheila is working at Sheriff Troy's general store. Thanks for getting me this job. <laughs> you kidding me? And Troy tells us basically the store wouldn't even be open. If it wasn't for you, this place wouldn't even be open again. And it was his father who was passed on his father's dream to kind of get that store back open and up and running. You know, my daddy loved this store. It's his lifelong dream, this place. And because of the work that Sheila's been able to put in, he's able to kind of continue his family legacy with the general store. Like, I don't think Sheila even recognizes the sacrifice. Yeah. I'm just stressed. Doesn't have anything to do with you. Okay. But why is her response? You have to communicate that with me. I just need some time. You have to communicate that with me. All we heard was him talking about don't tell these people our business and we spending our money and he's communicating it the entire time. Well, maybe she meant communicate why he was stressed out, right? Because he says, I'm stressed out. It doesn't have anything to do with you. I just need time, right? Because he's used to providing. So this is like a different, this is messing with his ego, Right. You know, and yeah. he needs to he wants to deal with it. However, he needs some time. It ain't got no context with her. clues. OK, he ain't got no job and he ain't providing. This is what he's been talking about the whole time. This is true. So then they get into the Tyler Perry. Um, right. I think he wanted this to be a quotable. So Sheila says <laughs> the hardest thing in the world uh, is, you know, when you have a good man after you've had a bad one. I mean, the hardest thing in the world is to have a good man when you've had a bad one. And then Roy comes back with, no, nah, basically, I think it's harder to have a woman who has a good man after she's had a bad one. No. Yeah. A good woman. Yeah. Who's had a bad man. Yeah. Oh, it's hard to have a good woman who's had a bad man. Yeah. Whatever the quote Whatever. is. I think it's harder to have a good woman after she's had a bad man. Yeah. Either way. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, 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 the kicker is 
Sheila turns around and says, well, you know, when you blame me and, 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 and punish, punish me, me for loving then you, you make me want to do something. When you punish me for loving you, you make me want to do something worth the punishment. When you punish me for loving you, you make me want to do something worth the punishment. Sis. Like, no. Can you feel me on that? What? You want to get punished? Then Troy don't even pick up on the foolishness, or maybe he does. And then he's just like, oh, I've been a bad boy. I need to be. I've been a bad boy. I think I need to be punished. punished. Bro, that was So lame. let 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 sex just fix this for the moment. Plus, Troy probably was tired of listening to her at this point because he, yeah, he already just done said he, <laughs> he already <laughs> said he wanted to. You know, he didn't feel like talking and now they had to go through this whole thing. So maybe he just distracted her to shut her up in yeah, the moment. Because she's like, oh, you don't touch me and all that. OK, I'll touch you now. Nah, good Come night. Come on, let's bone. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all go to the comments. Did Troy say that weird line like, oh, I've been a bad boy to just uh, divert attention to sex so that they could so she could get the intimacy she wanted so they could kind of make up and whatever or do you think that you know he just wanted her to shut up <laughs> wait what that's the same option twice <laughs> <What>? <laughs> okay what should the options be <laughs> ain't no options <laughs> why did troy deliver that line to make sheila shut up <laughs> Mike is downstairs in the kitchen early morning, just having a cup of coffee. And who comes down to the kitchen to cook for her husband but Sheila? Of course. He's like, oh, it's Sheila. And she by herself. Let me take my opportunity. So, you know, he comes in. Good morning, Sheila. Good morning, Sheila. And it, uh, Sheila's looking like, oh, my God, this guy. Uh, and so she's getting the stuff out to cook and everything. Sheila should have turned on her heels when she saw him and went back on up to her room. And But she doesn't do that. Uh, and he so, acts oblivious and mm -hmm. say, what the hell are you doing here? If you're trying to start some mess, then blah. What the hell are you doing here? Are you here trying to start some mess? Clearly, he was there to start. Like, what else was it? You've been here for a day already. You've seen what he's been doing. Yeah. If you're trying to start some mess, it's not going to work, okay? So she starts to actually engage with him, which is a mistake, too. Big mistake. Yeah. You know, and she's just like, I'm over you. I'm over it. And I am over you. Then he just goes in. Is it really that easy to get over someone? Is it really that easy to get over someone? Especially after all the time we shared. Especially after all the time we shared. And then he tries to take her down memory lane, right? Because this is what they always going to try to do. People who... Which is why she shouldn't have just been sticking exactly, around. Exactly. Exactly. He's trying to manipulate. So he's like, let me just try to remind you of all the good times we had. Oh, we broke into that store. The first time we made love, it was the best. Do you remember the night we broke into the clothing store? Hmm. It's the first time we made love. It was the best. And I've been sitting at home thinking about all the good times we had. I've been sitting at home thinking about all the good times we had. How many songs are written about just this very thing? <laughs> I've been sitting at home thinking about all the good times we had because I was a fool. He gives this whole example of, you know, this first apartment or whatever that they got. And he's talking about the colors. Do you remember the first apartment we rented? Well, you painted the kitchen orange. You remember that? You know, he's trying to flex on how he remembers all the fine details or whatever. And um, she's like, nah, the kitchen was yellow. It was yellow. I remember it. And I noticed because of that hole that was in the wall from where you pushed me through it. Because of that hole in the wall, the one when you pushed me into it. And uh, I know about the towel. Yeah, I remember that because my nose uh, bled on it and I couldn't get it to stop bleeding or whatever. Yeah. And I remember the pink tile. My nose bled on it. Before, we never knew that he was physically yeah. abusive to her. And I was so depressed. And I want to know, do the other friends know that he was doing this to her? Since mm. they know everything else. Mm. And if not, then that means she didn't want them to know. Then she can understand why Troy wouldn't want them to know about his job, right? Because I guess it's, you feel some sort of embarrassment, whether it's right or not. Right? Yeah. But then it takes me back to when Troy said, I ain't Mike. And then she's like, you're acting like it. Like you equating this with getting beat. I just think there's just the dysfunction. Different things could trigger people who have... Um, you know, gone through that type of yeah, abuse. Right. And Thanks. it's You're not going like to necessarily be logical. You better not tell me that if I know that this man been beating you and you tell me you're acting like that guy. 
Yeah. No, we got a problem. Uh. <laughs> what the? What in the <laughs> world? Think about it. You like I ain't, I ain't Jeffrey Dahmer. Where you're acting like it? What? <laughs> you compare me to this guy? Exactly. Yeah. Like, come on now. And then I'm just like, man, Mike. At this point, I'm like. Okay, are you truly going for like the second place prize behind Mr. from the color purple? Because <laughs> at least Mr. left Celia alone after she left him. Like you just will not, you were just will not leave her alone. And so when she's pissed off with him and everything and she says that to him, and Please and stop. You could see his wheels turning and he looks like and he apologizes too. I don't know what came over me, okay? Just I was a fool. I am so sorry. And he's like, you know, I'm so sorry. I miss you. He tries to touch her and she yanks away. And she tells him, you are my past and there ain't no future in it. You are my past and there ain't no future in it. Okay. Get your ass out this kitchen. She should have. That's what she should have told him when she saw him the first day. <laughs> that's what they all should have said. Get your ass out of this kitchen. Go. But you know. I need to know if the friends knew this because they going on a fishing trips with him, laughing and stuff about Troy not being on the boat yeah, with them and, and all this other stuff. And he a of his woman. And then the women too. Hmm. So it takes me like, that's the problem with sequels. I know they probably don't have a sequel in mind when they're doing the first one a lot of the times, but they would like, don't tell Sheila nothing. And y'all knew that she was getting actually beat on and then the dude brought the new woman over who was supposedly the friend listen go to the comments and let us know do you think that sheila's friends knew that mike was taking it to the bridge every night that he was just really doing this to her do you think they knew that and does that change how you feel about him if you think they did a little later <laughs> what is this so the ladies are all out on the beach and they're getting in and out the water and whatever and then Angela is coming out and then all of a sudden this powder just hits her in the face and it turns out that it is the ashes <laughs> that this uh, older couple played by Louis Gossett Jr. and Cicely Tyson were trying to spread of their dead friend on the beach. These are her ashes. And so she's freaking out, but the ladies are introducing themselves to this couple we should invite them to dinner yeah, yes. mr and mrs jones would you join us for dinner and they say oh you know we want to invite you to our, our why did i get married it's, it's when we share our why did i get married stories yeah so this is the same this is the only clue i get that this is the same as all the other uh trips like with the study exactly so then the ladies, one interesting thing about this scene is that the ladies start to introduce themselves. You know, Patricia's like, hi, I'm Patricia Agnew. Patricia Agnew. Diane. Diane. Diane Bob. I'm Diane Bob. Uh, Diane Bob. And we got to say, look, for the longest, we didn't catch that their last name was Bob. And we kept saying, why do they keep calling Terry Dr. Bob? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like anyway. intuitively, you're like, yeah, that's the last name. But just to have a last name, Bob, just don't click. It was, just, yeah, it just didn't quite click. But then Sheila, when she's introducing herself, she's like, hi, I'm Sheila. Hi, hi. Sheila. So Sheila don't have a last name. She's not Sheila, you know, Sheriff Troy or whatever. Uh, <laughs> she just Sheila. Sheila Troy. <laughs> you know, that's, I don't know. But it's interesting. So. Yeah, I don't know why, but maybe that's the class thing too, right? Like, I think, oh, that's the first time we probably brought it up. I think it's changed over maybe the past 60 years where, you know, certain classes stop introducing themselves with their full name. So maybe that's an indicator. Could be. We talked a lot about class in our series that we did on Why Did I Get Married? But that, that, that could be a clue. And even in this movie, and we'll talk about it more later, you know, you have still terms like ghetto being thrown around or yeah. whatever, especially by Terry. But that's what uh, the thing about class, too, is if you're not in that class and your friends or whatever are going out, doing all these vacation and going to restaurants and doing all these activities and you can't afford it, you're going to be extra broke trying to. You know, just hang out with your friends. Trying to keep up, yeah. Like, so that's one of the reasons that classes don't really mix in that way, too. Uh, economic class. Sheila, Troy, hold that. Troy gets up there and tells why he got married, and it's basically he says it's simple because I love this woman, and yeah. Because I love this woman. And then you know, the, all the couples are here and they're doing their why getting married, and I'm like, again, why is Mike there? 
Yeah, why is Mike there? And then, of course, when they call up Sh- Sheila and Troy, Mike like has this look on his face, like, <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. So then Sheila goes and basically it sums up to she found the opposite of Mike. There had to be an opposite, and I found that exact opposite in this man. So she needed to love and, and to <laughs> trust. When I met Troy, it was his eyes. They said that, and that I could trust him. But, you know, let's go back to what Troy said, though. He said that there was so much, she had so much pain. Behind her eyes was so much pain and truth and love. And he wanted to help her and heal her and be her hero. I wanted to help her, heal her. I wanted to be her hero. And then she turned out to be all of that for him and more as well. She'd be all that for me. And then so she's my queen. So, like, it was reciprocated. But I think that when we asked the question in the first movie, like, okay, when was Troy, you know, interested? And when, you know, when, when was he making his moves and what, what was going through his head that we didn't see expressed? Now we know that, you know, it was really wrapped up in the hero. He was trying to be the hero, all of that, even though, you know, I mean, so it was exactly what we thought it was. And he even said, she my queen. Yeah. I needed to trust and to love. Because I've been through a lot. But then when Sheila was done, you know, it's over. Found the exact opposite in Mike's eyes. <laughs> so the frame of reference is Mike. <laughs> yeah. Bruh. And, but yeah, why is Mike there? Why do you even have a chair? It would be a chair just for the the, the, the older couple that's coming. And then for the yeah. four couples that's supposed to be there. How you, you wouldn't even have a chair out there. Yeah. Don't, don't come over here. It's crazy. We get up and at the beginning, first off, I want to let y'all know that this is about couples. I don't know why Mike is here, why he got to listen to us. Why did Mike get married? I don't know. He just wanted to beat on Sheila. So let's start. <laughs> like, come on. Yeah, because what was you really going to say in the moment? Why did I get married to Sheila? Was well, I wanted to beat her and then we got a divorce. Like, uh, it just, yeah, come not going to work out. So basically, the bombshell that drops in this discussion is that Patricia decides to announce that her and Gavin are getting a divorce. And so, like, how are you going to be announcing a divorce at the Why Did I Get Married conference? You know, like, what? But anyway, so that's what happens. We'll talk about that in detail in Patricia and Gavin's story. But moving right along. Hey. Hey. Troy can't find a job. He come back home and he opens the refrigerator. He's dressed nice, you know, got his little suit on. The light in the refrigerator is off. It's broken or something. Maybe they can't afford to replace it. <laughs> I'm just Shut playing. But the light in the refrigerator is off and the microwave doesn't have a light on it, too. I'm just looking at how the scene was set up and stuff. It's very dark in this place. No light on, but it's daytime. But it's not a lot of light coming in from the outside either. It's very, you know, just a dark. You know, dank scene. And yeah, I guess you did a good job, Tyler Perry. I see what you done there, bro. Yeah. So he didn't get the job because then he says he was overqualified. <sighs> I didn't get it. I'm sorry. Overqualified. My question <laughs> is, you walking in from like you got like, OK, how you know you didn't get the job? Because normally they don't tell you right That's on the spot that you didn't get the say. job. Good thing you, you found the out the same later, day. You know, I mean, they getting real quick he in was, 2010. He was like, hey, all right. Yeah, we're done. Thank you. Uh, you know, we'll be letting you know. But uh, just so you know, you didn't get it. All right. Yeah, that never he happens. He going to cry in the car. <laughs> <laughs> But then Troy talks about, you know, oh, man, the mortgage is due in both places. I don't know what we're going to do. The mortgage is due here and back home. We don't have the money. And talking about how he going to get the money because Sheila is like, hey, we need to go ahead and ask uh, Angela or somebody for this money. I'm going to borrow the money from Pat or Angela. (laughs) No, you're not. Because we borrow from each other all the time. You must not have heard what I said in the Bahamas. No. Well, and I think what he was trying to do in this moment was she was like, oh, you got to communicate what's going on with you. So he's coming in. He's in a pissy mood and, you know, he doesn't have the job. So he communicates to her, hey, the mortgage is due here and back home. I don't know what we're going to do. And then first thing she's like, swoop, I'm going to swoop in and try to save the day. I'm going to borrow this money from Pat or Angela. And he's like pissed with her about that. He's like, you must not have heard what I said. I told you no. 
I'm gonna get the money. Okay. Dang. And he says, I'm gonna get the money. Yeah. And then she's like, but, you need to get your pride out of this. Yeah. You really need to get your pride out of this. I'll handle this. Yeah, then she's like, I've never seen you like this. I've never seen you like this. You never had financial issues with That's this That's true. Guy. And then, you know, he's upset, but he's like, I'll handle this. The way I interpreted it is that he was trying, he was not looking to her to come up with a solution. He was telling her so she would know why he was stressed out, which was her whole complaint when they were in the Bahamas, right? And so in this moment, she goes into, I'm about to solve this mode. Let's borrow this money from my friends or whatever. And um, he's just like, no. Yeah. And then he says, we should have never left Colorado. Yeah, I, I agree with him. I should have followed my first mind. You know, we should have never left Colorado. I should have followed my first mind. So one thing is you got to probably get set up on the other end before you just go. In. I know it sounds good, you know, and in a lot of movies, it's we just uprooted our lives and went over here. Everything works out or the Lord works it out and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But one time, you know, I was living in California and then how I ended up in Dallas was, you know, I wanted to move there and I had a job right lined up. And I was like, yeah, you know, so bam, now I can leave, right? Yeah. And then I get there and these motherfuckers ghosting me. Well, mm. I, like, seriously. And it's a huge uh, company. I guess you could call them Aerospace or something, but yeah, that's what they did. So then you had to scramble. It was Raytheon. <laughs> so just so <laughs> y'all know. You name and names. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then you had to scramble. Yeah, but so I do think that maybe you should, you know, it might feel good to... And then they had some money and stuff, but you still had the mortgage, too, and, yeah. at the other place. So I don't quite know about that one. Sometimes it makes sense to just be like, all right, we're going to go and see what happens. But, you know, I think it is good to be like, all right, we're going to move to Atlanta. Let me just start putting my resume out there. Yeah. It, it just take a little bit of extra time. But I think also sometimes if you have like a savings or if you have some money, then you're figuring you have more of a cushion than you do because, yeah. man, you could blow through your savings so fast if you don't have money coming in at all. Yeah. You know, you could that the shoe. You could be like, I got savings of 100,000. I got savings of 50,000. That 50,000 will go like boom, yeah. you know, especially depending. And so, you got to move and you close in on a house and all this and that because they got a mortgage yeah. in both places. Was he not paying Sheila when she was working at the general store? Can you hire somebody to just instead of selling the store? Because your income. Well, he wasn't going to be there to manage it. And maybe he just didn't. I guess. But I'm something. saying, well, I'm saying for this not that to happen. Kept, oh, yeah. Some cash. You still have in. the money coming in. Like, you know. Yeah. I guess. But it maybe just you couldn't afford the, the two mortgages. Yeah. If, with that one uh, income. Yeah. It, it, it could have been that, you know. Yeah. But so, um, so they're in there talking and she's like, you blaming me. So you blaming me for this, huh? And then he's just like. Damn it, give me some space. Like <laughs> I'm gonna make some calls. Troy. Damn it, Sheila, give me some space. <laughs> he yells at her. And we never see Sheriff Troy yell. But he didn't yell at her. He he yelled at her louder than he yelled at Mike. He Bruh. didn't even yell at Mike. Yeah. And then she's a woman. She snapped. She's like, Don't you ever talk to me like that. And then you hear the baby start crying in the back. Yeah. Don't you ever talk to me like that again. You know? <laughs> and <laughs> But but I feel her like, listen, we got to have some decorum and some respect about how we get around. But she was also like on him, like, bruh, let that man go on ahead about his business for a second. He didn't told you, no, he didn't said what he had to say, you know. And, and here's the thing. Financial issues. If you're bringing in money, then it would make sense that you could be like, all right, I can you know, uh, work a little bit of overtime oh. or something like that. But she she was a work at home mom. That's where her job was to take care of the child. And she stayed at home. She was not working outside of the home at this point. Let him solve the money issue because he's the one that makes the money and brings yeah, the money in. Maybe, but it ain't working out. So maybe you could sell that. Um, but see, that's part of the that thing. With, had put yeah, the bars on. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things with, uh, you know, capitalism and stuff is it make it like it's a meritocracy and it's not because he can't so-called provide. It isn't on him all the way. Right. But they make it right. seem like I'm going to do this and the things that I do. No, it's the so-called market forces and all that other stuff is why 
somebody would be like, you're overqualified. No. <laughs> yeah. And he's internalizing it. Right. So yeah. it's affecting how he feels about himself in the moment. So, yeah. yeah. So things are just getting worse and worse. Hey, babe. Hey. I'm glad you called me. Tyler Perry. <laughs> Tyler Perry pulled the soul food and Sheila asked her as my ex Mike to, uh, you know, get her current husband a job. Yeah. Just like bird did limb in soul food. So you don't went to the arch nemesis and asked to help your man get a job. Like, uh, yeah, and think I'm not man enough to find my own fucking job. I'm sorry. You fucking that nigga. No. Then they met in person. Like this could have been a phone. You just like you called and said, meet me. You can talk on the phone, but she wanted to see him. Oh, my goodness. Just yeah. what a mess. You know, and he's all like, how are you? I was shocked when I got your call. I knew you missed me. Uh, <laughs> you know. I was shocked when I got your call. I knew you missed me. Stop. And his face hit the ground when she was like, I only came because I need a favor. Is that the only reason you came? Yeah. <laughs> And so we find out that Mike is so high up on the, uh, the rungs that he plays golf with the chief of police and that he can make a phone call and help Troy get a job, which is the whole reason why she says she's there. Because I need a favor. What is it? Troy's been trying to get a job. and Can you help him? Yeah. And Mike don't want to because he's like Sheila, you know. <sighs> Sheila. I'm just, just a yes or, or no. But he agrees to do it, right? Um, and then he asked her, is that the only reason you came? And basically, she like, yeah. But Troy can't know well, about this. Troy cannot know about this, okay? So you sitting over here and you... You, mi you missed something. What? Like, she got up to leave and came back to, to further engage with him. Well, no. So the, she, she, she said, but Troy can't know about this first. It's really good seeing you. You look great. And then he said he won't say a word and she gets up to leave. Yeah. What's wrong with you? And it then she went scene. back talking about, why are you being so nice, bro? Just yeah. get away. So like, she, she he does. wants to engage with this guy. You called him mm -hmm. and said, hey, let's meet. And then you're about to leave and you come back. So why did, why are you being nice? If you didn't think he would do it, then why would you even set this up? Like, it just ain't making sense to me. And the other part is I wonder, too, is you have a favor. Maybe you think you can convince him of the favor better in person. And also, I do think there's a little bit of getting your lick back with this because now she's aware that he want, he kind of is interested. He want, you yeah, know, so well, she's going to try to use that to her advantage. You knew that you already know? from him showing up at the other place. And, 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 and she, you know, is looking good and everything. And so, you know, she's basically... Yeah. Turning, trying to turn the tables on him a little, and maybe it just feels good to get her her lick back. Yeah, maybe maybe that's part probably, of the motivation. But why are you doing this? But she want to ask some act some kind of way when he say that he miss her. Like why else would he even show up to meet you? You knew that. Like come on. Yeah. So she's like, "What's wrong with you? Why are you being so nice?" And he's like, "I made some bad decisions in my life, and I just want to fix them." And I made some bad decisions in my life, and I just want to fix them. That's all. I do miss you. Oh God! I miss and you. He keeps saying it. I miss you. I miss you. So like his his motivations are clear, right? I want I want you back. Yeah. I want that good thing. I want that old thing back. And, and she um, like get my husband a job. I don't know how I feel about that one. I don't either. I don't know. It depends how desperate times are. Look, if if it's gonna rely on something like that, we gonna have to be on food stamps. Cause so it's don't ask him for a job. Don't ask friends for help. The Lord will make a way or I'm just going to do it myself. You know, like, come on. Man. I mean, in a situation like that, it's like, all right. Troy said he didn't want help, basically help. Yeah. But now you're helping him behind his back. Yeah. You know, which is still going against ex. what he said he wanted. But then it's like with your ex, your ex who he has had words with. This isn't just a neutral ex. This is an ex that is you know, basically his arch nemesis. Yeah. And, and who was laying right. the smack down on this woman. Yeah. You just asking for trouble. Girl. But how well does, was he, she locked up when they were married and stuff. Like there is a world where she can know some of the same people. She could know the chief of police or is it, well, I guess the golf relationship golf, they don't necessarily going, yeah. meet, but maybe she, yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I guess she's just going to the, closest point that she knows could probably get the job done and that's mike yeah so. but it sounds like okay he's been trying to get hired by um i don't know what city uh but he's trying to get hired 
by the police department and he's trying multiple times in multiple ways and they're so-called giving him the runaround. I go back to what you said in the beginning. Like the call should have already been put out before y'all even left Colorado. Your network of friends yeah. should have just been able to make a make a job happen. And, and that should be that. Is this realistic that an actual chief can't get a job as any sort of cop or security guard in Metro Atlanta? Because he's supposedly overqualified. So I guess that was Tyler Perry's way of being like, OK, I'm going to account for the fact that he, you know, he was, was overqualified. It wasn't that you didn't have any experience but yeah, yeah that's weird to i don't me. know because he i should have been able to get a job i think it's like realistic where to be like oh you're a sheriff of a small town so you are underqualified for this high level you think you are at to be at, a sheriff in atlanta yeah. <laughs> right um but yeah or you know whatever in whatever that county's near Burnett atlanta or whatever Fulton or Fulton, one of these yeah. other ones i don't know what to say on this but you're right i i agree it is a bit unrealistic i think more importantly, it's crazy that she just did the soul food, you know. So was this like a just a quick borrowing of of the soul food kind of thing? Like, mm, that was a good dynamic, you know. Uh, but was it yeah. thought of from the beginning? Like, OK, we could just make it like soul food. This movie, Troy is going to be looking for a job and can't get one like Lim. Yeah. And the difference is that Troy is just on the opposite side of the law as Lim. Because, you know, Lim was a convicted <laughs> criminal yeah. and Troy is a, a good guy. Yeah. So, um. So, yeah. It's a good nod, you know. Hmm. But I just needed him to talk to him that way that uh, your boy was talking to Lim. Uh, <laughs> you this, wanted him to put on lunch. a whole bunch of like, uh, you wanted him to put some lip gloss on his lips. And like, you wanted Tyler Perry to pan in and he would be like, you know. Yeah, I can't uh, remember that line Coke he bottle said. Or something. Yeah. He called her, I, I used call to call her Cola. Coca-Cola or something. <laughs> Oh, Cola, we uh, we go way back. <laughs> man, he was so disrespectful. He was very oh, disrespectful. Man. That's just a little something, you know, I used to call her back in the day, you know, since she got that body shaped like a Coca-Cola bottle, huh? But see, oh, and then too, if it if it's about shape too, all right, I'm getting into my writer's hat, but about her shape and then it's the irony of Mike and them having the problems because of Sheila's weight too, mm -hmm. bruh, mm -hmm. come on. And there was then, something there if you should have took it all the way there, Tyler Perry. So she then sat herself here and begged for this job from behind her husband. husband's back. Mm hmm. But Pat and Gavin, I know they were like a template for us. I know. Me, too. So the girls are together to have drinks, everybody but Patricia. And, you know, they get into these philosophical conversations about relationships, blah, blah, blah. And Sheila makes the statement that if you think the man's cheating, then he's cheating. If you think he's cheating, then he's cheating. And also she talks about how Pat and Gavin now being uh, going through a divorce were the template for all of their relationships. And we sort of speculated on that in the last movie when, when we discussed things. Then the other thing that I was thinking to myself was like, OK, are you serious? But Sheila decides to give some advice to Angela, just like in the last movie. And this time it's about Angela's drinking. And she's like, you know, you might not want to listen to the voices in your head about these things. Did you smoke so much weed in college? <laughs> Baby, you might not want to listen to that voice in your head. Uh, talking about Marcus cheating and stuff like that. And if you're always in a chemically induced state, you might want to reconsider. If you're always in a chemically induced state, you might want to reconsider everything that you're doing. And I'm like, OK. That was kind of out the blue and off the cuff for you to say to your friend at the table while you're casually having drinks. Yeah, that's probably why you showed up. I don't know, but you know, but yeah, we could talk more about that in Angela's uh, video. Yeah, that we're doing but like, this movie. but but I want to get on the part where she on Sheila's part in this. So again, this is very similar to the first one where Sheila was saying she was going to pray for Angela and Marcus's marriage while her marriage was in shambles. And I think once again, we have a little bit of not hypocrisy, but just uh, a little bit of her being in denial about her own situation and, you know, kind of needing to keep her eyes on her own homework while she's over here, you know, trying to dole out advice. Yeah, but it might be good advice, you know, because everybody, they just like, oh, she want to drink and stuff. and then. Sheila is willing to be like, hey, you might want to think about your drinking. Yeah, I don't think it was bad advice. I just think it was just kind of like, you know, good advice coming from the wrong person. Or, well, nobody you know. would, none of them would be able to give any other one advice, right? Uh, because they all got something going on. That's true, too. 
That is true too. And I yeah. will agree that I I do like that she said relationships yeah. are about supposed to be about trust. And but they you were know, talking yeah. about cheating and stuff. And Sheila says, if you think he's cheating, then he's cheating. But when we get from the first film, she was actively trying to make herself believe that Mike wasn't cheating, right? Well, and that's so, maybe it, right? So she knew he was cheating the whole time. Yeah, but she didn't, quote, think he was cheating, right? So therefore, he wasn't. If you don't accept it, then it's not the case. Hmm. Hey. Hey, where you been? I went out with the girls. Same day when Sheila gets home, she's still wearing the same dress she had on earlier when she met with Mike, when she went and had drinks with the girlfriends afterwards. She comes in and Troy is like, hey, where you been? And then she's just like, oh, I went out with the girls or whatever. And he's like, I'm sorry. He just like straight apologetic. And I'm like, this is weird. And he's like, I thought you left me. I'm sorry. You know, I thought you left me. <laughs> so it would be nice to know more about Troy's past. Cause like, dang, why would you think that? He but got he some says, trauma going yeah. on too. She always threatened to leave him. And that's basically what he says. You, every time we argue, you threaten to leave. Like, dang, bro. Just... Why would you think that? Because every time we get into it, you threaten to leave me. Just go and go then. <laughs> I'm going to leave you. Good. Because I don't want you to leave. <laughs> and he's like, married people argue even in a good marriage and how, you know, they have a good marriage. Maybe married people argue even in a good marriage. I know. We got a good marriage. And he don't know what he would do without her or whatever. I don't know what I'd do without you. Look, he was in, he he was just so frazzle dazzled that he was like, I cooked. I even went in there and I cooked. And she's like, Well, okay, it smells good. And next thing you know, he's like, I got me a job. I got a job. Oh, babe, that's great. <laughs> and then I she acts tomorrow. all surprised. I know. He don't he says it came out of nowhere. I, I start tomorrow. It, it just came out of nowhere. It was it was the craziest thing. Told you. She don't ask where's the job, what's the position, none of that. She already. Knows. But my thing is, Sheila couldn't get home before Mike's Midas touch uh, worked on his job. Like that's pretty fast. When you think about it, she met yeah. with Mike. She had drinks for a couple of hours, so, and then he gets a call that he starts tomorrow. Yeah, like dang. Mike works fast. That's what that power will do. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so he's got a job now. And I don't know. Do y'all think she should have told? Should she have just been like, listen, baby, I got to tell you something. And I know you might be mad at me, but I don't know. <laughs> That's I a think. tough one. But I met with Mike today and somehow you got a job. Uh, and where where have I been? That's with the girls. Yeah, yeah. This is the, ugh. <laughs> this is the descent into madness. It'd be like, I worked really hard so you could get this job, Troy. Oh. I done some things. I'm in a shut I'm in a bind, up. Nate. Oh, shut up. Not Nate. Not Nate. <laughs> hey, Sheila. Don't hate me. What'd I do? Don't call my house again. Next thing we see, and we are just totally confused because Sheila comes busting into that same diner where they had met before, and she starts yelling at Mike, and she like, don't you call my house and stuff like that. If you think you got me over a barrel because you helped Troy get this job, you are wrong. Yes, and so clearly Mike has called Sheila's house. That's just unacceptable, and she's pissed with him. And what kind of woman do you think I am? That's not what I'm trying to do. What is it? And he's like, no, no, it wasn't about that. And then he's telling her, I need your help. And then he grabs her arm, and his hand is shaking and stuff. I just, I, I need your help. So, like, something is going on with Mike. Mike must be sick. <laughs> Mike must be sick. But the thing is, so she called him for help. And then when he calls, then she just totally goes off. But that's what happens. Uh, helping is costly. <laughs> yes. Tell us what movie that is from. Helping is costly. If y'all know, you know. Good job today there, rookie. Thanks. Looks like they trained you well up there in Colorado. Troy's, <laughs> Troy's at work and this cop comes in and he's like, good job out there, rookie. <laughs> And then it basically is told that, you know, anytime the boss says that somebody comes highly recommended, then you just never know because this is the, you know, the network and nepotism sort of a thing, right? Anytime the boss tells us you come highly recommended, you never know. So you don't know what quality of work you're getting. And <laughs> highly recommended by who? He runs it down, oh, some golfing, but this guy just well, happens yeah, to know. Yeah, because Troy wanted to know, like, well, who recommended me? 
Yeah, like, but... Yeah, your wife. Uh, one of his golfing buddies, Mike, uh, I don't know, somebody. Why would this guy know somebody. all the details? Anyway, he said that your wife asked him to hook you up. I helped you. I pulled some strings to get you hired. I mean, what, what you didn't know? And then Troy asked, you know where he lives? You know where he lives? And then this guy just happened to know where Mike lived, too, I'm guessing. He just know everything. Bruh. This guy knows too much. Lazy writing. Lazy writing here. But, you know, it gets the point across, right? It, it lets us know that now he knows that Sheila is the one who had got Mike to make the recommendation. And now he wants the address. Where is it? So he going right. over to Mike's house now. Bro, you about to lose your job. You about to lose like, your job. You, think about it. He got a job. He found out that somebody helped him. And the first thing you want to do is go to the person's house. Things come. This is getting dark. Uh, Troy goes to the house that I guess this other cop tells him, you know, where Mike lives. And Troy is banging on the door. He banging on the door like he the cops. Yeah. Well, he is the cops, but he banging on the door. Sheila answers the door and she goes, oh. Oh, <laughs> tears running down her face, just looking. And then he goes off. What the hell are you doing here? The hell are you doing here? Are you kidding me? You trying to play me for some kind of fool or something? Like you trying to on. play me for a fool? You're not supposed to be here. What the hell are you doing here, Sheila? You're not supposed to be here. He, I mean, Sheila's returning the favor, bro. Goodness, you got your job, didn't you? Bro. No, I mean, but I'm being dead serious here. Like this was just. This was over the top Tyler Perry craziness. Yeah. That didn't have to happen. And yeah, just yeah. no. Wait, 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 wait. Where's my? Don't touch me. Let me, don't let me just, let me just. Um, <laughs> so we have the typical, I don't know, film sort of a thing where the person can't just come out and tell you what's going on. Talk to you. Got, let you me know just, what? You can't explain this. Where is it? Troy's trying to bust in to find Mike, and she's like, let me just talk to you. Let me tell you. Hold on. Blah, blah. Everything, instead of just saying, this is the deal, it's over, right? And at one point, he looked like he might, you know, he was like, get your hands off me. It was almost like he, she could have get hit in the process because he was getting, he was very upset in that moment. <laughs> and, yeah. yeah. He finds Mike. Mike is laid out on the couch. Get up! Baby. Talk to you. Get up! Oh, my God. He done punched Mike, got him all uh, all in the flow and stuff. Wait, 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 wrong! What? How he did you be here? Mike and didn't then, hear none of this and didn't get up. Uh, yeah. At all. Well, he's just real sick. You think I need him to get a job? Think I'm not manning up to find my own fucking job? I'm sorry. You fucking that nigga? No. Then she finally tells him he's got cancer. Talking about Mike. He's got cancer. I'm just taking him to get him. So yeah. Mike then got cancer, and that's why he is being kind and nice and trying to reevaluate. And his she's life. taking him to chemo. So is this before or after chemo? This, I guess it would I have to know, be after how after. weak they had to show him. But yeah. yeah. And yeah. then Troy is like, "I don't care. That's, that's how you do me, yeah. and he leaves. I don't care either. Like what? I don't care. That's how you do me. No. Why is she so secretive? Why can't like? Why what? couldn't she just say? Uh, listen, it's, it's, it's a way you could resolve this whole thing. And maybe because you felt like he got your husband a, a job, then you needed to come over here and do this personally. Then you need to keep it from your husband. You need, Mike got so much money and he is balling so much. What he needs is you could hire somebody to do that. You could hire a caregiver. Yeah, or, you ain't got to be over there taking care of this man. You don't know any other person. You know, and it not just to mention be the that you could have just said. Laying the smack down on. She could have just said to Troy, listen, where she messed up was asking for that job. We agree on that. But like she could have just said to Troy, listen, Mike has a Mike got yeah. cancer and he's asking, can I be the one to take him back and forth to keep whatever at this point You're in the movie? Like, <laughs> she is cheating right in the minds of who, like there's no excuse. Yeah. You're smashing. Yeah. That's what it looked like. That was the point, not. right? That was the yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. It was to so look like nothing that. she can say matters. Mm -hmm. Even after this, nothing you say matters. Cause, yeah. But. In that moment, that's what's in his mind. Because I think he went there to confront Mike. He was not, he did not go there thinking that she would be there. Yeah. But she's there. And 
Where's the kid? I know where the baby at. He come from work. You were supposed to be with the kids. You over here neglecting your kids and taking care of a grown man who was beating on you and everything else. That's like, it makes zero sense to me. All I know is Sheriff Troy had a right to be upset. He's still <laughs> he Sheriff broke. Troy. I don't care if he changed his job. He's Sheriff Troy. Officer Troy then broke into this man's house. <laughs> no, he knocked. And then that door was open. Yeah, but then he walked in, but she was telling him to stop. So, uh, yeah. He well, I mean, so that's what happened. And in a way, it, it was unfortunate, but Mike had it coming because Mike did so much dirt between the first and the second movie. Yeah, but he didn't really do anything to Mike, so. So, yeah, so, like, this is... Things have escalated and they didn't have to get to this point. Trust me. Uh, I'm sorry if I hurt you. I didn't know. So the guys are at a bar with Mike, you know, because they still best of friends with Mike after everything that we've seen in these two movies. And Troy comes up and he apologizes to Mike. Look, I know we don't know each other, but you should know your wife. And she ain't that way. That's not how this works. Mike gets to be in a position of, of, of moral superiority and tells yeah. him that, you know, you should know your wife and she ain't that way. Yeah. Bruh. Best man won. Mm-hmm. Like, no, this, none of this work. How was this resolved? That he saw his wife at, the, at her ex house just during the day when she's supposed to be with the kids while he's at work. Didn't tell her nothing about getting a job. Didn't say nothing about this guy. Being, I didn't know. Yeah, you didn't know because your wife didn't tell you. That's about the trust part, right? And he's like, you know, life is too short. Trust me, all this. But no, he don't get to get to have his character rehabilitated, right? Mm-hmm. Because there is no atonement there. And it's just simply a sob story that he got cancer. So y'all need to make this right. All right, fix it. But he does tell Troy, you know, the best man won or whatever. whatever. And at the end, he buys Troy a drink, and that's supposed to just make up for everything. Sure, sure. Right, sit down. Have a drink. Come out. But, it, but he does say that um, to make it right, telling all of them in their relationships to kind of smooth things over and, and fix things because life is short and all that. But Mike says about why he doesn't, didn't tell everybody that he's sick. So why didn't you tell us that you were sick? He was like, what, is, what good would that have done? Y'all still at each other's throats. What good would that have done? You guys are still at each other's throats. Like that, that didn't make any sense to me. Like, yeah. so he didn't say he was sick to his friends. And they did say, hey, you're our friend. Oh. We would have had your back. So cl- I'll be fine. All right. You know, I'm a fighter. I'm going to beat this thing. Clearly, after everything Mike's done, they're still in his corner. In the movie, who apologized to Troy? Nobody. We didn't see Sheila do nothing. It's just Troy was just wrong because he found out at work that his wife was doing stuff behind his back and at her ex house. Yeah. And Troy got to come and apologize to the man who was laying the smackdown on his, his current wife. And, and, and like, th- it's just, bro, it makes zero sense. Just stupid fighting, fighting for what? You don't want to end up like this. So basically the only resolution that we get for Troy and Sheila's relationship is at the hospital after Gavin's accident. And we'll go into that in, in full detail in the video that we do about Gavin and Patricia in Why Did I Get Married To? But for now, it's just that they hug after Patricia encourages them all to fix yeah. their relationships and love one another. Love one another. Please fix it. Fix it. They got back together because Patricia killed Gavin. Shut up. <laughs> <That's> what... <laughs> But and you they know, like, fix it, fix it. And then they hug. And then so, but the real resolution, I think, is Troy apologizing to Mike. So in the end of all this, Mike is the most terrible character. He's just right. That's- and actually, Mike says the same thing, right? First, Mike says the quote unquote fix it line. And then it's followed up by Dr. Patricia. Yeah, it's this is the, a tough one. Yeah, we, we're going to talk about that when we get to Patricia stuff. But just the way the resolutions of all of these in this movie. Jake, yeah, not there. Yeah. And I think the main thing is that it was this film really was about Patricia and Gavin, um, as opposed to the first film, like how you pointed out, you felt like it was about Sheila and Troy and Mike. I, I, I just think that that's it. And since they weren't really the focus, you know, they had a story, but how their storyline was cleared up in the end was very raggedy to me. 
Uh, it's not enough. It yeah. doesn't fix the trust issue. It still looks like Sheila was cheating. We never got a conversation between Sheila and Troy after the blow up. Yeah. Like, what you mean? What could she possibly say that could just be like, oh, yeah. They tried to sum it up with, oh, just uh, trust your wife. You know, you know your wife wouldn't do that. And that's just the answer. But would you expect your wife to just be sneaking behind your back, talking to her ex and getting you jobs and stuff like that? Like, I needed a conversation. I needed for her to be saying, listen, this is where I went wrong. And I realize that now I never should have said this to him. I never should have asked him for the job for you. Yeah, I never should have. And then tried to at least something. In the end, you were still over there behind my back. You were inside of his apartment or whatever. Yeah. His house his when I got loft. there. When yeah. I got there, you were in there. I don't know what you could say. Like, let me roll the footage of the, <laughs> of the security camera. This is you. This is you going up in this I man's guess, house. But it can you can still stay together, but it not be like it's been resolved in that same way. It's just like, all right, we're married, so Lord. I'm never gonna believe you, but we can get through Shut this. Up. I'm never gonna believe you, but we can get through this. Maybe what about uh you know, they talk about their init- their things, hey, I wanna stay together. We gotta go to counseling. And not yeah. Patricia. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, we're going to go to somebody else. Yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, with a little more distance between the relationships. But overall, I mean, how did you feel about this film and their story? I think that it just took a big turn. And I guess you got to bring in the drama. And I think that's what Tyler Perry did. He just brought in the drama for their story because it really would have had none if we would have stuck to the same characters. But. It makes Sheila look very bad. Like you got out of this. She was supposed to be just a good woman. Right. And you overdid the good because she's so good. She's helping out her abusive ex who treated her terribly when in, in his time of need. You know what I'm saying? So she has this moral superiority in that sense. But you overdid it to where it's bad because I'm so morally great, you know, or superior that I have to sneak behind my husband's back to do these things. Here's what I think, and as an alternate ending, <laughs> y'all gonna hate this, but okay. So as the alternate ending, I would say this. Let's go back. Sheila actually does cheat with Mike, right? Somehow in the midst of their caretaking, and let's say it's not, you know, maybe they kiss or something, but she cheats in that way. And then she decides that she wants to be with him instead of Sheriff Troy. Yeah. So after everything Sheriff Troy has given up, Sheila has decided to go back to Mike's trifling butt. Again, this is yeah. an alternate ending. But the reason I think that this makes a good alternate ending is not because you're going to feel so great about it at the end of it all, but like it brings the drama and it's craziness and it's realistic because this is the type yeah. of thing that happens in real life. Exactly. Because what we know is that Troy was basically just a rebound. He was there when she had this breakup saying all the right things. Mm-hmm. Right. And she wasn't seeing straight at the time. And then when they got together, they had their issues. But in this second movie, Mike, like we really saw when they, she was down for breakfast in the morning, Mike was risen her up the whole time. Risen. Okay, you we're know? bringing that word riz back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I try to incorporate the young and slang. Mike was risen her up when she called him. He was risen her up. Then when he called her, right, risen her up. And then when they go into chemotherapy and he's there while, you're de- while your husband, who's been struggling to get a job, is at a job, you away, he's risen you up and knocking it down again. And he's looking at things differently because he has this, uh, you know, this disease and he's not going to beat you and all that because part of the reason is he on chemo. So he's weak, too. Shut so it up. looks better than it did the first time you were married. Yeah. And and I think, OK, so at the end of it all, Troy's going to have a broken heart and it's going to be all sad. Right. But instead of Patricia getting to see the rock at the end, maybe it should have ended with Sheriff Troy getting to see, you know, his Patricia. <laughs> no, d- <laughs> listen, don't do the Sheriff Troy can't have two two in a row if that was the situation. So it could end with Sheriff Troy seeing his 
you know, ideal mate, right? And yeah. smiling and then, you but know, or whatever. No, it ain't. And she go back and buy the general store for him. Shut up. No, <laughs> it is not Patricia. Patricia Patricia doesn't even deserve the rock yeah, at the end. Yeah, you're right about let that. Let alone We're going to talk about Troy. that one some other time. Oh, but my yeah. gosh. But yeah, that's that's my version of an alternate ending but, for this. The way it ended, it just was very unresolved for me. Did Tyler Perry ruin Troy's character? I think he tried to ruin Troy's character, but I won't let it happen. Yeah, I think he tried, you know, he was like, I'm trying to get a job. But the part that I don't like about it is the I'm going to do it on my own. We going to that's the same thing that Sheila did, though. So I guess he tried to reverse he the like roles the male Sheila. somewhat. Yeah, but I don't think. It but really he wasn't out. super keeping secrets. He was just like, I don't want my business in the street. Yeah. And that's different than like, I'm going over here to take care of my ex-husband with yeah, chemo. But no, not that keeping secrets part, the part of I'm going to just do it all on my oh, own. Yeah, I on don't need own. no help. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was very much Sheila in the first movie. So, yeah, but I mean, we appreciate you all. I can't believe and most of you guys who are, are watching this video right now. Y'all have stuck it out with five videos on the previous movie. This is the first one on the Why Did I Get Married 2 series. Uh, hopefully this will only be for a four part series, but we, you know, we, we do what, what is needed. In fact, we weren't even expecting to do this series right after the last one, we were going to go to a different movie, but the uh, resounding y'all got to do part two was so loud that we just said, okay, we're going to go ahead with this. Yeah. Let's keep the conversation going on discord link yes. is in the description, but if you made it this far into this nice long breakdown type, why is Mike there in the comments? So we'll know you're one of the real ones who stick around to the end. And be sure to check out our series on why did I get married? The playlist on the screen right now.